Fragrance Watch 2018. 2000? 2018. Fragrance Watch 2018. Today on the Royal Flush, I have Manny from Cascade Sense, as you can see. What we're doing today is we're talking about five Italian fragrance houses, and we're going to predict what they're gonna do next year, and then we're gonna request what we want them to do next year. If you haven't checked out Manny's channel, he did the same video format, but with French brands. But today, it's all about Viva Italia! Forza Azuri. <laughs> the first one we're going to talk about is Prada. So I think the best designer release that I've tried this year has been L'Homme Intense. What do you think Prada has in store for us next year, Manny? Honestly, more clean stuff. You have the Luna Rossa line, you doubled down on it with a Savage clone. I wouldn't be surprised to see one men's fragrance release within the Luna Rossa line and maybe another Lom fragrance because we have three Lom fragrances so far, I believe. Yes. Lom Lo, yeah. And why not make something else? Maybe an absolute. Who knows? You know, you already have Entense, but. You know, who's to say that you can't continue with these flankers because it's all these brands do nowadays. And I'm not saying this is what I want them to do, it's just what I think they're actually going to do. I couldn't agree more. Prada is probably the standalone king of clean, soapy fragrances. It makes its way into almost all of their designer releases, which I don't think is a bad thing either. I respect the company for staying true to what they do well. And looking at the amount of Luna Rosa flankers there are, I would just assume that Loam is going to sort of follow that same trend. Now, in regards to what you actually want them to do, I'd like to see maybe a myrrh injected kind of Luna Rossa style I love fragrance. Myrrh. I think that'd be cool because that's <laughs> something that they've shown to be equally competent at. I actually do want them to do another lung flanker, but in the same way they took Luna Rossa and then made Extreme. It's still mass appealing, but it's gorgeous. Lum Intense, although I'm a huge fan of it, it is overtly masculine and can turn some people off with how brash it can appear to be, especially the first couple hours. What they did with Extreme was there was only a hint of that original Luna Rosa DNA in there, and they created something beautiful out of that. Kind of that sort of direction, but in the Lum line would make me more than happy. Next up we have Gucci. Gucci is a house that uh, it's seen better days. Gucci used to be one of the most prolific creative houses in the designer world. <coughs> Tom Ford. Tom Ford. But he left and then in his wake left a bunch of Gucci guilties and Gucci by Gucci. And <laughs> the brand kind of has gone in a bunch of different directions. What do you think they're going to do next year? Another forgettable Gucci guilty flanker seems to make a lot of sense. I think that they tried with Absolute. And it's sad that a lot of people within the fragrance community weren't as receptive to it. It. If you actually give that fragrance a wear, I actually think that it's kind of lovely as far as its sillage. But to see it out of the most mundane line out of all time, I think shows that Gucci is willing to step outside of the box to a certain extent. Gucci Guilty Absolute was very daring and it has a lot of really good redeeming qualities. I think their big mistake was labeling it as a Gucci Guilty flanker. <laughs> My God. Because yeah. man oh man, Gucci Guilty, it's, it's very, very basic. It's a very generic fragrance. So the kind of people that would be going for generic fragrances, all of a sudden getting that, it's not something they're used to. But us frag heads, we can more so appreciate it than the average Joe or Jane. Because they were so daring once, I could see them taking another stab at it. Although I wouldn't like to see it as a Gucci Guilty Flanker. It's the name that everyone recognizes, so it makes most sense for them to do that. Now, as far as what you want Gucci to do, tell us. I want Gucci to do an exclusive line. Why not double down on, you know, an exclusive line like YSL has or Chanel has and stuff like that. Get into that market because right now designer wise, I think you guys are kind of getting killed at least men's wise because I know Gucci Guilty as mass pleasing as it is, it's getting outsold heavily. Try something new. I think the easiest way to try something new is to have a line where you have endless creativity. What I want Gucci to do for any other house, I would hate this, but I kind of want them to do a fresh aquatic kind of a Ambroxany type fragrance like everyone else. Gucci Guilty's DNA is a bit dated now. So why not take a stab at, you know, your standard freshie, something very fun, easy to wear, maybe a little bit creative as well. So we don't feel it's redundant. Gucci Guilty Aqua Atlantique. Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> 
The next Italian fragrance house we're talking about is Armani. Now, Armani Code was one of my first designer fragrances that I ever bought myself, so it does have a special place in my heart. What do you think Armani is going to do this next year? I think they might be fairly dormant. They've done a lot of stuff with the Armani Code line, for example. If they are going to do anything, it will be with their Armani Privé line. They've really exhausted the Armani Code line in the sense where there's three fresh flankers in that line alone. With Sport, Ice, Colonia. Wow. Honestly, I don't think they would release another flanker, but they could easily prove me wrong. <laughs> Again, with flankers, there's a flanker for almost every designer release. So perhaps there's going to be a flanker of those two fragrances because it's you and because it's your father. I hate that it's you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, cute. like just really play that narrative. Now, Manny, what would you like to see Armani do? Honestly, just create a new men's line. For what that line is, good question. <laughs> I have no idea. What Armani does way better than a lot of other designer houses is incense. Their use of incense is very, very cool, uh, especially in their private line. Even in Aqua di Gio Profumo, there is a little bit of the incense in there. I would love to see Armani Code specifically have an incense flanker. As amazing as Profumo was in regards to its performance, it just played off of the whole Tonka craze. Mm -hmm. So it was fairly generic, very similar to a uh, 1 million Privé. An incense-based Armani Code flanker would be really, really cool, and I would love to see it. Our next Italian house is one of the two niche houses we're talking about, Aqua di Parma. It's an old school house, it's been around for quite a while, and they are definitely known for their fresher fragrances. What do you think they're going to do this coming year? I think an update to the Blue Mediterraneo line would make so much sense mainly because I feel like it hasn't been touched in a while. It's probably gonna be another citrus, but I feel like they've done other citruses, you know, maybe in other lines that they haven't specifically done in this line. And this is where you get to highlight that fruit. Well, because their most recent release was part of the Colonia line, it's one of the many flankers, whether it's Absoluta or the original or Intensa. So I think Aqua de Parma is going to give us another bottle from the ingredient collection. It's the Colonia line with the brown bottles that showcases the darker notes. You got oud, leather, myrrh. I'm a huge fan of that line specifically because who would have thought I can wear an oud fragrance in the summer? Colonia Intensa Oud, it performs like 15, 16 hours, but it's still light enough that you can pull it off in warm weather. It's almost like they're making fragrances for themselves, for their own people, and then we can enjoy it vicariously through their fragrance. What do you want Aqua de Parma to put out next year? I'm not gonna front. What I want them to do is also what I think they will do mm -hmm. as far as a new Blue Mediterranean line, but specifically the kind of Blue Mediterranean fragrance I want is a tomato leaf fragrance or a tomato fragrance mm -hmm. because you guys have done every other citrus or fruit, you've done myrtle, juniper, but why not do, you know, tomatoes? You can call it Bellissimo Marinara, trademarked. Now, when you see Aqua de Parma at the department store, if you, if you have one near you, you'll see all the blue Mediterranean line proudly on display. You'll see all the Colonias, and then you'll see like one or two random green bottles. Colonia Club is actually one of my favorite Aqua de Parma fragrances, and it's almost a fresher Colonia-esque take on a green fragrance similar to a green Irish tweed. Very mature, sophisticated, and I would just like to see more from that line. And that's very specific to me because I, I do like really interesting green fragrances fragrances and seeing what Aqua de Parma was capable of with notes like oud and leather, making them so accessible, I would love for them to do the same thing with green notes, with coniferous and cypress. All right, last up, we have the house of Zerzhov. Zerzhov is my favorite niche fragrance house, arguably my favorite house, period. They make some pretty amazing fragrances. What do you think Zerzhov is going to put out next year, Manny? Honestly, I have no idea. In regards to what I think Zerzhov is going to do, kind of goes against how I feel about them because I do feel they're a very progressive company. They do some really bold things. But, you know, even Creed, there was the Aqua line they released, which had a lower price point. They're owed a toilet concentration. So I could pretty easily see Zerzhov do something of that nature, a little more universally friendly to bring in the designer market it a bit, but do it in the Zerzhov style. Now, in regards to what you would like to see Zerzhov do. Zerzhov, I feel, has covered every genre possible. What do I want out of Zerzhov? Because they're so eclectic, you know what I mean? At this point, since I don't know, I'd rather them just surprise me with anything dope, because that's typically what they do. I'm the same way. I mean, I'm obsessed with this house because
because of their creativity. I don't have the self-confidence to say, hey, this is what you should do. I'm just in awe of everything they do. The fact that they're so enigmatic and they're so creative is part of their mystique and it's why I love them so much. Although a cop-out answer would be, hey, maybe another cool line. Maybe an 1862 line. Zerzhov, I bow to you and your genius. So that's it for this video, guys. I had a lot of fun doing it. Manny, thank you so much for joining me in the royal court. Thank you. And again, if you haven't checked out Manny's version of this video on five French fragrance houses, please check it out. The link is in the description below. All of our links to the Facebook group, Snapchat, and Instagram are down below. And if you like what you see, then please go ahead and subscribe. And if you like this video, then like this video. That was the royal flush, guys. Peace.